What compelled a group of German immigrants in 1884 to undertake a nine-day journey from Denver to an area in San Diego that was known as Los Encinitas? Do you know where Olivenhain is or the history behind it? It's a small settlement in North San Diego County that was originally called Los Encinitas. I'm Ruth Birch with Pace TV. Today we're at the San Diego Heritage Museum where Richard and Twink Booman are joining us. Hi, Hi so Ruth. glad you could join Hi. us today. We're here so to tell you what happened when a group of colonists signed up to adventure to their promised land and how it all turned out. Richard and I are direct descendants of those original colonists and Twink has been inspired by Richard's research to do her own, which she'll be sharing with us later. So let's step inside the museum to learn more. Two brothers, Frank and Warren Kimball, own large areas of land, including National City, and up here in the North County, a, a Mexican rancho called Rancho Los Encinitas. They wanted to sell the rancho, and in fact were had advertised to sell it to a colony. The reason they were selling to a colony is because during that period of time between 1870 and 1910 more than three and a half million Germans emigrated into the United States. Many of those joined a, a, a German colony and together they had common language and customs and together they became proud United States citizens. Because the colony was made up of a large number of people, each person within the colony would only feel a small impact of the total cost of the land. Um, therefore, the sale of large parcels of, of land to colonies was as lucrative to, de, to, the, to the landowner as it was essential to the colonists. The Kimball brothers advertised the Rancho Los Encinitas in many newspapers across the United States including San Diego, Denver, Colorado, and Chicago. During that time, there were a number of people that, that answered the ad. Uh, uh, one was from Denver, Colorado, a man by the name of Theodore Pinther. Mr. Pinther had expressed to the Kimballs that he would be willing to organize a German colony and move his settlement to the Rancho Los Encinitas sometime in, the, in 1884 if the right prices and terms could be agreed upon. Theodore Panther and his close associate and colonist, Conrad Struble, uh, went from Denver, Colorado to National City and talked to the Kimball brothers and made an agreement to buy the Rancho Los Encinitas, which was 4,400 acres. Uh, they signed a contract and things were ready then for the colonists to be to come to their promised land. That's really interesting, Richard. So how many colonists ended up actually coming and how did they all get out here? The colonists left Denver, Colorado in November 1884 aboard a train. Uh, the train, they came across the, from Denver to, um, to Los Angeles by rail. And from Los Angeles, uh, actually in San Pedro Bay, they went by steamer then down to San Diego. And from San Diego took another small train back up to Encinitas. From there, they had to walk to their promised land. The colonists arrived in, in Encinitas in late afternoon. They had to walk then the remaining five miles from the train station out to the, out to the rancho. The colonists then moved out to the adobe ruins and they, that's where that became their new home. They were then on the promised land. They uh, were required to work for the colony for at least 30 days and, and uh, therefore- Free labor. Had, free labor, oh, oh yes. And, and they made various improvements in Levenheim, for instance, taking the chaparral out oh, okay. and they started to build, new, build homes. Those that couldn't afford a home had a shanty built. Really? Mm -hmm. What would a size of a shanty been? Shanty, there was two sizes of those. One was 12 by 14 and the other one was 14 by 16. My great-grandfather lived in a shanty 
um, from 1885 uh, to his death in 1893. Well, let's take a look at the cutaway they have here at the museum, and you can tell us more about that. Okay. Great. Richard, this is a, basically a cutaway of what an original shanty would have looked like? It sure is. As you can see, it's very basic. Um, it, it, for, the shanties were very popular be, because of financial reasons and also fit the needs of, of bachelors. Uh, they usually had a stove, uh, of course a bed, a uh, place to keep their clothes, uh, uh, a little bit, little bit of a food supply, uh, but they, they were very basic. Uh, I don't believe there was ever a family that actually lived in one of these with a wife and children or anything like that. It was, it was, this was basically a bachelor's home. But now on the property, I understand there is an example of an original home that a family lived in. Is that yes, correct? there is. Great. There is. Okay. And, and I think we can go out and look at okay, it now. Okay, great. That's a good idea. This house is one of the original houses that were built in 1885 by the colonists. Uh, it was used for a very short time by Theodore Pinther. Oh. And then after he was expelled from the colony, it was used again for a very short time, maybe a year or so as a schoolhouse. Then in 1892, Fred Tayton and his family came and, and purchased it, and the Tayton family lived here for about 90 years. Really? That and long, I didn't that, realize. That was a long time for yes, them, it was. yes. That really is a long um, time. Uh, it's being, it's, it's, after, it's been moved from the original location to here, and now it's being restored. Great. So, I'd like to know more about then what happened to the original colonists when things didn't work out after they found out that Pinther had deceived them. Can you tell us what happened to the colonists after that? You know, that's a that's that's kind of a, a big story. So I was wondering if we could step over here and get into the shade. Sounds like and a we, good and idea. we'll talk it over over there. All right, thanks Richard. Let's go, Sage. All right, now I am curious, Richard, what happened to those original settlers? After the, I wouldn't call it actually the total collapse of the colony system in 1885, but actually after Pinther left, the colony began a, a gradual disbanding of, of, of its policies. And, and most of the colonists had been, were very disillusioned by, by what had happened. And, and by 1887, 80% of the colonists had fled the area. Some, some went back east, uh, some went to the surrounding communities, uh, some homesteaded in the background, what does uh, that in the mean? back hills. What do you mean homesteaded? Uh, there was government land still available. Okay. And, hmm. and, and just for occupying the land and making improvements to it, you could acquire 160 acres. Oh, wow. and, and there was a number of those homesteads surrounding the colony uh, settlement. And in fact, the Canes did that. Oh, my uh, grandmother's the, the boom family. Yes, mm -hmm. the Boomans, the Rasics, the Wiggins, uh, quite a number of, of the people uh, homesteaded. Did the Coles homestead? Yes, they did. Silas and Mary Cole homesteaded in about 1894 near Lone Jack Road. They, in fact, were neighbors to my grandparents, Herman and Emma Boone. Ruth, Twink, let's go on out to the meeting hall and let's meet up with Stanley Cole. Okay, oh, that sounds like a good idea. Oh, 47. Oh, 47. Yeah. Is that an Indian? That's an Indian chief. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And you know, my dad had motorcycles and so did my Uncle Henry and Uncle Eddie had, had motorcycles. For goodness sake. I sense. know my dad had a Harley. I don't know what uh, 
what what oh. Rustad had, but um, I think so it was the Harley also. Yeah. So yeah. what's the deal with your Model T? What, oh, what year is that? This is a 1923 uh, Model T Ford, and uh, it's been reconditioned by us. Uh, we've rebuilt the engine and different things. Oh yeah, and well, it runs pretty good, so, huh? Yeah, it goes down the road. Yeah, he's having a hard time keeping up with me, but. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Um, this is our dog Sage. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. He he has his goggles on so he doesn't get a fly in his eye when he's going down the road in the Model T. <laughs> Great. All right. Let's okay. go take a look at the meeting hall. Take his hat off of him and. So here's the plaque. Twink, could you kind of read a little bit of that for us? Yeah, the uh, plaque was put here by the E. Clampus Vitus group, and um, it, it mentions that the Olivenheim Town Hall was actually uh, put into the historical register in 1993, wow. and uh, then this plaque was put in place in April of 2001. Okay, let's go take a look at the plaque on the other side. And yeah. Okay. And wait to tell us more. Yeah, this is our original plaque that we had on the meeting hall. This was built, put here in 1973. Uh, I actually had this plaque made. Carly Tayton and I walked into Tijuana, Mexico one time and had it cast out of bronze and then we walked out with it and we erected this thing in, in 1973. It describes a little bit about the history of the meeting hall, that it was actually built in 1895. Uh, it was built as a 10-year anniversary. The colonists arrived here in 1884, and so in 1894, they decided to build the meeting hall, and it was, it was finished then in 1895. Before we go in, I got something really kind of interesting here. All right. Uh, Great. When I was seven years old, this was 1949. I remember when this was built. Really? This, I don't know why. It just some something. Huh. Anyway, um, these concrete steps. Here. The concrete steps were yeah. built. Yeah. So one th this thing I'll just remember for the rest of my life. Somebody had a bucket and they threw it in here. So somewhere down in here was a bucket oh. <laughs> buried in the concrete. Oh my gosh. Wow. Wow. Oh, that's right. oh my gosh. Yeah. So that's just. Uh, for some reason, I just continue to remember that. Stuck in your mind. Stuck <laughs> yeah. in my mind, yeah. Little guy. Interesting. Over here we have this shanty, and uh, I have something really interesting to tell you about this shanty, and uh, we'll go in and, uh, and we'll talk about it. All right, let's go inside. Just go on in. Stan, thanks again for joining us today. You have so many interesting stories and history about this area. And even though we're cousins, <coughs> I didn't grow up in this area like our dads did. Mm -hmm. And so I really find it fascinating to come and hear the stories. So tell us the little story you started outside about the shanty. Yeah, that was, uh, that was one of the original shanties uh, built for the colonists. And it, it came from um, Richard's Aunt Marie's house, yes. uh, her, her property. And um, how did it, it get here? Uh, it was um, drugged down the road. My dad hooked it onto the back of his truck and put two planks underneath it. And they actually drove, drug it right down the road and they delivered it here without any problems. What year was that, or approximately? I believe that was in the early 70s. And, yeah. uh, and yeah. it was, um, is that right about the early 70s? That, that yeah. sounds about right. That's 1972, yeah. 73. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, you yeah. certainly couldn't uh, do that today, could you? No, you couldn't. <laughs> no, that would be, <laughs> that'd be really a problem. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so I got down here right. and and it uh, worked out really good. Did any, yeah. were either of you uh, as boys involved? Did you see it? Bro? Oh, I was here. You were oh, yes. here when? Yeah, I was one of the cars behind the- Oh, you were. Behind the building as it was going down the road. Yeah. Wow. Um, well, this old meeting hall is just fascinating. I just love uh, looking around and I see there's a lot of interesting pictures and you had pointed out the one to my right that's of our great-grandfather Silas working in a copper mine. And I understand he came from Pennsylvania. He did. He, um, he came from uh, Pennsylvania, and uh, his uh, great-grandfather Ezekiel Cole owned a grist mill. And uh, a lot of the family members worked in this grist mill. And I guess times were tough, and uh, Silas wanted to leave, and he moved to Nebraska. 
And then he moved to Illinois where he met and married Mary Kent. And then he moved out here and then they had uh, several uh, children and one of the children was um, uh, Clarence and that oh, was our, that was that our was our grandfather, grandfather. And, uh, and then Clarence had three boys Arthur was my dad and then Henry and then Eddie was your dad That's right. and, and they grew up here in the valley this is the old schoolhouse Ruth uh, yeah. this was actually not very far from where we are right now it was just across the street um, uh, this was in uh, the school started in 1886 and was in operation up until 1942 so I guess our fathers probably all went to that school. Didn't all they? of our fathers went to that school. Wow. Yes, they were educated in that little one-room schoolhouse. Uh, there were a variety of teachers. Uh, uh, Lena Winters is shown in this picture, but there was there was a lot of other teachers. One of the teachers I remember taught there and also taught me when I was in, oh, in really? school over in Encinitas. Yeah. And what happened to the school? Did they tear it down? Or? The, the school was moved to San Diego High School and used as a, as a schoolroom there for about 30 additional years. And what did they use? And then after that, uh, as a band room. Oh, that's nice. And then they, then they tore it down and wow. that was the end of it. Uh, Ruth, this picture is of a cook wagon. It was taken in 1911. And we have Gerhardt Cole standing here, uh, Silas Cole sitting on the, the oh, stool there. My and great grandfather. Yeah. yeah. And Charles Cole there on the horse. And cook wagons, this what they were uh, baling hay in this picture. And it took them more than a day to get the hay baled. So they would bring in a cook wagon so that the men would be able to eat. Because it would take a number of days to get that much hay baled. This is the John Berg store. It was actually just across the street over here. Uh, that's John Berg in the doorway, and that's his horse named Billy. And it was always an exciting day when, when you heard Billy coming down the driveway because you knew John was going to deliver some goods that, that you had ordered from the store. Oh, so he took them out to the farmers? They didn't have to come to the store to uh, get uh, them? Both ways. Oh, okay. Yeah, both ways. Oh. But this store was in operation from 1886 up until about 1911. Oh. Uh, uh, it was finally taken over by the County of San Diego and used as a, a road maintenance building. Oh. Um, and, um, and tore down and actually moved by them in about 1920. Oh, look, here's a picture of um, my dad, Ed Cole, playing the guitar and your uncle Herman on his, what is he playing, a saxophone? saxophone? I believe it's oh, a wow. saxophone, yeah. And you said uh, that, that there be, was a Mac and uh, Mac Fred? Brink is there playing the piano uh, and Fred Harvey is playing the violin. And it looks like this was during the war. I see some um, uniforms and Th this was during World War II, and uh, there was a convalescent home about 10 miles from here for the, uh, uh, the, the servicemen, and they would come here to the Saturday night dances. Well, that was nice. And this piano looks like it's possibly the one that's still in the hall here? It's exactly the same one. Is the, that right? the, the piano you see in the picture is the one that's still in the meeting hall. That's a great picture. Uh, notice that they're still using the lanterns. Oh, they yes. They didn't have electricity yet. Wow, and this was in the early 40s and still no electricity. Yes. Great. So Liebenheim didn't get electricity until 1948. And this is the original piano that has been used in the meeting hall for many, many years and is actually the one that's in that, that photograph there. And I'd like to, there's a lot of things that happened here in the meeting hall, and I'd like to just sit down and we'll talk about a few of those things. So we're here in the Elevenhine meeting hall, and um, the, the Elevenhine colonists, and when they want, they, when they celebrated their 10 year anniversary here at, at Elevenhine, they built this building. And this building was built in 1895. And uh, oh, okay. And you just recently had a, a new celebration, right? In fact, we had another anniversary just this, this last, this year. Uh, it was the 120th anniversary of the, of the meeting hall. And 
there, there have been so many activities in this building. Uh, there have been dances, there have been parties, there's been weddings. Uh, it just goes on and on. Uh, the uh, early dances that were actually done here were, uh, were, by, were done by a, a club by the name of the Owl Club. Oh. And in fact, in a lot of those dances, Richard Scott was the secretary. Oh, and he was and at your celebration, the 120th. He with was the there too, daughters. also, yes. Okay, I remember yes. seeing him when I stopped by. Yeah. And yeah, you know, actually, oh. Richard is, is the oldest uh, person from one of the original uh, families in the area. So, Twink, what were some of the activities they had at the 120th celebration? Well, there was quite a bit going on that day. There were the pony rides for the young children. There was face painting. Uh, they had free ca uh, penny, penny candies that the Boy Scouts were passing around. And uh, oh, we had some guest speakers. Kristen Gaspar, the mayor of Encinitas, oh, was here. Very and, nice. And gave, gave us a proclamation. And uh, we also had ice cream. There was an ice cream vendor here. Oh. And then um, the San Diego Costume Guild had people here in period costumes, oh. which they were what just a nice um, thing. Oh, it was very nice. Yes. It was a, a very spectacular event for so the 120th. They were singing and yeah. performing kind oh, of throughout yes, the afternoon. We, did, yeah, we had a barbershop quartet that sang for, for the afternoon. Very nice. Well, that was very special. It and was. Have many of probably the older and the newer generations that were involved mm -hmm. in that. Yes. Great. Yeah, it was very nice. It was a fun event. And nice that it could be held right here in this old hall. Yes. In fact, uh, Richard was inside the meeting hall and he was sh had a lot of pictures of the farming era at that time and so there were oh. people he was giving uh, a slideshow. That's right and I believe you were giving tours at the hotel yes. as well as Richard yes. doing the yeah, uh, meeting hall. Mm -hmm. Great yeah. day. Yeah, well let's get up and we'll go over and have a tour of the hotel. I believe that is possibly where Theodore Penther, where the meeting was held that did terminate the, the colony. Uh, interests with Theodore Penther. Wow, so that hotel was here back in 1884. Yes, it was. Actually, the hotel was built in 1885. It's 10 years older than oh. this building, than the meeting hall. Well, this has sure been fun. Uh, I have some things to do. I'm going to go, and I will be back later. Great, Stan. Okay. Thanks so much. We appreciate you coming. Germania Hotel. Uh, this plaque was placed here in uh, commemoration of the hotel uh, by the Encinitas Garden Club in 2008 and then the foundation was built as an Eagle Scout project and done in 2011. So let's go inside and see the hotel. Here we are inside of the Germania Hotel. This was built by Herman Becht for his wife and 10 children in 1885. So this was the only building of this type that was built in Olivenhain. The rest were more typical of the shanty that we saw earlier. And it was quite spectacular. Yeah, this was very spectacular. And I think as I mentioned uh, when we were in the meeting hall, this was probably where they held the meetings that terminated Theodore Penther as the, um, or he was the organizer. Right. Of, of getting the call he started, yes, and right. uh, yeah, his services were terminated here. So, Twink and Richard, is this the original location of the hotel? Um, actually, no. The hotel was moved here in 1982. It uh, belonged at that time to Carl Tayton. He had sold it then to Dan Wigan, and Dan Wigan donated the hotel to the Olivenheim Town Council. Oh, really? And the town council then raised the funds to move the building to this location and started restoration. Uh, then the building kind of fell into a state of disrepair for a number of years. And about 13 years ago, um, I was in charge of the building's restoration. And 13 years you've been working yes. on Yes. But with a lot of dedication. Uh, we had an excellent uh, contractor, John Knowles, and he has done the restoration work. This is uh, some of the original wainscoting that was in the here. However, the walls were redone. It, they had been lath and plaster, and now it's drywall. Uh, also, during the restoration up in this 
uh, door header. Uh, oh, right yeah, right up in there, there was a, a rat nest. A pack rat had taken one of Hermit Beck's business cards and put it up there. And when we were taking oh this God. door frame apart, that business card came floating down. And it said, Herman Beck, proprietor of the Germania Hotel. Wow. wow. So that was kind of like the rat that saved history. Yes, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, fine. Wow. So, oh, it's, um, yeah, it's just been a long process, and it's, uh, the building has come a long way, and now we can use it. The Boy Scouts use it for the Haunted Hotel, and we use it during the craft fair as for vendors, and we also have it open for other events. So these time. are fundraisers that help yes. to continue with the restoration of this, and fundraisers that help with the meeting hall and maintain mm -hmm. the grounds and yes. the trees and everything. Yeah. I have many fond memories of this area as a child, visiting my grandmother and your grandmother, Stan, Amanda Cole. She came here at the age of two with her family, the Canes. Mm -hmm. This area, I know, holds lots of fond memories for the new people that have come, as well as for all of you that have been here and kept the history alive. So I thank you so much for sharing your personal stories and the history of Liebenheim today with all of us. And thank you viewers for tuning in to Pace TV. Well, thank you. Oh, yeah, it was great. Thank really you. nice you, seeing good you. Good seeing you. you. Good seeing you. Yeah. Take care. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye now.